So recently, the Supreme Court has been poking their heads into the laws and agencies we use to protect the environment. Let's break down what's already happened, what's coming up next term, and why we need to be really concerned about these guys. I know they're adorable right now, they have a tiny little gavel, but we need to be concerned about them. Today we're talking about the Supreme Court and the environment. Some of the best tools we have to actually protect the environment and fight climate change come from laws we pass with legislation and from federal agencies that uh, promote regulation. But the Supreme Court has been taking aim at all of these tools. And it's a mess. It was a wig there, your honor. So first, in June of 2022, the court significantly weakened the EPA's authority to regulate emissions from power plants, effectively ignoring the authority given to the EPA from the Clean Air Act. An easy Supreme Court. Well, that's kind of how they've been. Then, in May of 2023, they redefined what wetlands the Clean Water Act actually protects, effectively removing protection for 51% of wetlands that were previously covered. And now the court has its eyes on something else, federal agencies. <laughs> They're so cute. The authority of these federal agencies is totally crucial to effective regulation, especially with climate. But the Supreme Court seems to be plotting something against this authority in the near future. Hey, hey Supreme Court, get back over to your side. <laughs> Sorry about that, federal agencies. Just the nerve of these guys. See, even when we pass legislation like the Clean Air or Clean Water Act, there's still all these little details that have to be figured out. Things like how much fertilizer can be used near a lake, or how much pollution a certain factory can emit, or even what constitutes as a wetland. And these details are usually determined by federal agencies because they're full of scientists and experts who have spent their whole lives learning about things like wetlands, fertilizer, and pollution. I mean, look at this little guy with his glasses and his clipboard. This guy knows about wetlands. So whenever there's been legal questions about things like fertilizer or pollution levels or wetland definitions, the courts have always deferred these decisions back to the agencies that originally made the policies. It's called Chevron deference. And unlike the Chevron company, it's actually great for the environment because it ensures all environmental questions go back to the agencies who know a ton about the environment. But the court is eyeing something drastic next term. It's looking to get rid of Chevron deference altogether. So next term, there's this case, Looper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo. And it has to do with this tiny obscure question about fishing fee licenses. Now, normally a question like this would go to the federal agency who made the rule, but the court may very well use this case to overturn Chevron deference, which means that agency-based questions like this and like these would now be fair game for the courts to decide and interpret bringing a whole lot of protracted litigation, chaos, and way less accountability to the whole process. All right, I think that's a wrap, you guys. High five. Oh God, oh, oh my God, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, I, oh geez.